Hey everybody, I hope you're having a fantastic day. We are all familiar with the Raspberry Pi, the little mini $35 computer that has taken over the world. They've sold millions of them, and this one is the 3B Plus, which is a quad-core model with uh, four 1.4 megahertz cores, a gig of RAM, all that kind of stuff. Just very solid uh, little device here. But I wonder if it's actually the best device for some of the things that we use it for. So I, I want to get you to think about something. This is a $35 device, and this is a $35 device. This is the HP 610, and it is what they call a thin client. And I understand that they're not the same, and there are times that you absolutely need the small size of the Raspberry Pi, but there's also times that you don't actually need the small size. And so when that's the case, where are you best off spending your $35? Now, the first thing I want to talk about is that in reality, this is not $35. If I were to go on Amazon today to get this with maybe a case and a power supply would cost me about $57 and that's not counting the SD card. In this one I have the stock one that comes from Micro Center and this is a uh, 16 gig card I believe. This is a 16 gig uh, class 10 card and so it's a pretty typical card that you would get with a Raspberry Pi. So all in you're more like $67 or something like that for the Pi uh, 3B Plus with the accoutrement. Um, and so it jumps up pretty fast. 35 to 67 is not, is not free. And so, um, but this by itself actually is $35 with the power supply, with the case, and with a small, in my situation, 16 gig little memory card. But that means that for $35, now this is used, but these machines are pretty rock solid, you get a full machine with everything you need versus the bare bones board where you have to go out and spend another 30 bucks to get the rest of the accessories and so um and again you're not finding these b pluses for 30 dollars 35 dollars so eh, it, it gets a little more interesting now what if you what if instead of calling this a 35 dollar pc you called it what it really was the 3b plus is a $67 PC. So what if you wanted to spend $67 on this? Well, that's exactly what I did by putting in this SU-635 uh, 240 gig SSD. So now, like when you start comparing these things, we are, this is quad core, this is dual core, but these cores are faster at 1.65. These are 1.4. Um, this has 240 gigs of SSD SATA 3 storage. I believe it's SATA 3. Um, and this has 16 gigs now for the same price. They're both silent. So this one actually has a few more tricks up its sleeve. It has a PCI Express slot down here, which I'm sure could be used for something. Has actually two SATA ports in here. This removable Wi-Fi card. And then on the back, we've got DVI and we've got DisplayPort, which can be used as HDMI or normal DisplayPort or transition to VGA. We have Gigabit Ethernet, two USB 2s, two USB 3, serial port, and we have the old school PS2 connectors. Plus, on the front, we get two more uh, USB 2s, headphone out, and microphone. So all of a sudden, we obviously have a complete PC here for two dollars cheaper than this and we've got new storage in it. So why am I bringing this up? The reason for it is is what you do with the machine matters. Again, if you need a tiny machine, this is great. If you have one of these laying around, this is great. But if you're actually gonna go out and spend 35 bucks or 60 bucks to make some kind of little server, which is actually what a lot of people do with these things, they turn them into servers, then maybe this is the better machine. And the reason being is that Although this has gigabit, and this supposedly has gigabit, this is actually sharing the USB bus with the network connector, which means that if you have a hard drive plugged in here and a network cable plugged in here, then they are fighting 
to share the same bandwidth. And so you're not getting close to gigabit speeds on this. And in fact, transferring large files, when I copied a large 3.6 gig image across the network, this one was over 10 times faster than this one. And so a lot of people use these things for server type applications. They use them for Node-RED, they use them for file servers, they use them for media servers. And in those kind of applications, this thing kicks this thing's butt. So am I telling you that this is better? No. This uses more power. This is used compared to new. Um, but when it comes to server type applications and even desktop applications, this is definitely worth considering. Now, there's one other thing I didn't mention. And for some people, it is going to be the most crucial thing of all. This can run Windows. And in fact, this can run anything. Now, for my tests, I installed Ubuntu on this and Raspbian on this because they were close to each other and I was getting, I knew I would get similar results without the software being a major issue. But when I needed a little machine to run my photo booth and I needed it to run Windows, I chose this. When I needed a little machine to operate as a point of sale system for testing my software, I chose this. When I needed something to drive some printers, like Dymo printers and things that I didn't want on my desk, I chose this. And the reason for that is because this runs Windows and Windows runs everything. Now, don't get me wrong. I am a massive, massive fan of Linux. But there are some applications where just having Windows makes more sense. And so I think that makes this a very, very compelling computer to buy. You can find these on eBay all day long. And there's another one, a 620, which is very similarly priced. Now, the question is, why can you find them on eBay all day long? And it's because banks and schools and businesses use these things as thin clients by the millions. They sold tons of them and they are rotating out of stock and coming into new machines and all that stuff. So, um, the last thing I want to bring up is the idea of desktop replacement. Now, I have messed around using uh, a Pi 3 as a desktop computer for a little while. I've used this as a desktop computer for a little while. And to be honest, they both kind of suck at it. Um, they're both just a little underpowered to use as an everyday desktop computer. Now, I have another comparison because I'm sure some of you are screaming at your things, well, what about the Pi 4? What about the Pi 4? Well, the Pi 4 costs more than this. And I have a Pi 4 sitting over by the side, and I also have a slightly more expensive version of this. And so we're going to compare an $80 computer to an $80 Raspberry Pi and see how they come out. But overall, I think these are both great machines, and I don't think you'd go wrong with either one. But choose your PC, choose your hardware for your application. That's all I got to say about that. Have a great day.